All right, what's up, YouTube? So this video, I, this just came across me while streaming. By the way, if you're not following me on Twitch, go ahead and follow me there. I'm also streaming on YouTube. I try to do that simultaneously. This video is going to be about captains in review, a year in review of captains, all right? Now, I think the fact that MLB The Show and STS tried to change things up to keep people more engaged in their game this year is a great idea. It's far better, seems to be leaps and bounds above some other games not to mention <laughs> 2K Madden. <clears throat> but the thing is, a lot of people gave negative feedback to sets and seasons later in the year, right? When it first came out, people were like not sure about it. Some people said they really liked it. Um, but either way, it's something new and fresh that did. And really in hindsight, you kind of look back, there's a really strong argument for looking at it and be like, wait a minute, that was a terrible idea. It, it hurts casual players. You got to grind constantly. And then there's the argument, well, you get different iterations of the same player. You get cards throughout the year. Um, you get 99s early on. That kind of keeps you engaged. And um, you don't have to wait for your favorite player to get a card because they probably got a couple along the way. So there's pros and cons, but mostly people focused on the cons. All right, so that's one thing. Captains was the other thing. Also a great idea. They just missed the mark, I think, with captains. Like, they just missed the mark. But overall, I think it's a huge positive that they added it. Now, uh, you're looking at a captain here that I'm going to talk about real soon, but my opinion is, yes, yeah, sets and seasons either needs major tweaking so that the grinding is not as severe, so that you keep people engaged in the game longer throughout the year and not the first two or three months. The way you can do that is, if anyone who dropped off earlier in the year, go check out the grinding you have to do for season five. All the cards are really easy to get. You can get mission xp from online gameplay which was not in the grinding events before um, most of the cards you get along the way are now 99s instead of unusable 97s right so if you do that earlier in the year then sets and seasons can have a chance to actually make sense but no one wants to grind a entire program to get all these 97 cards that they won't use just to get one good card that they will use for about six weeks eight weeks until the new season changes over that's my opinion of how you can fix sets and seasons if you don't want to completely get rid of it. Uh, so make the grinding easier, give them online XP, um, get 99s along the way, and overall just make this program shorter so that people who only play casually can only hop on, just have to hop on for a couple hours a week to get those 99s and have a really competitive team. Obviously, for the people who play more and the people players who are better, Try to find a way to reward them for either playing more, the game more or for just being good at the game. Obviously, like going 12 and 0 in BR still gets you good rewards, um, but they should be better. And then, same thing with events. Um, World Series, ranked seasons, kind of the same thing. They added more XP online, which is good. Make the rewards better for those who can actually get the World Series. Changing the difficulty gap, that's a whole other discussion. So, let's leave that for another time. But I think. They need to fix the, the jump from Hall of Fame to Legend and not let, you know, you shouldn't have people who are consistently playing over 1,000 rated drop back down to 700 after the new season resets because then you're going to be playing someone who was playing on All-Star and got to Hall of Fame for the first time, maybe cracked 800 for the first time, and then they get sent back to 700. All of a sudden, you're playing. There's guys who are here and here playing each other for the first, like, week, two weeks of a season, and then... I don't know about you guys, but getting mercied by someone like two or three games in a row uh, because they're normally a thousand rated, but they go back down to 700 makes me that's the thing that makes me want to stop playing the game, not the content. You know, sometimes the gameplay a little bit, but it's things like that. So if they could fix that, that'd be great. Anyway, captains overall positive. They could fix it. I think they should keep captains. There's so many captains in this game that have like either just a pitching captain, just a hitting captain, or you look at it and you're like, wait a minute. Isn't there a captain for this? I thought there was. I thought there wasn't. A lot of times you find out there's not. Why is there no East Division's hitting captain? Right? This just seems like SDS spit out like a rough draft of captains and forgot to like add more stuff along the way. It's like an incomplete project. So this Roy Halliday card, great idea, great concept, East Division's captain. But what are these boosts? Tier 1 boost is 5 walks per 9. Tier 2 is 5 stamina, 5 walks per 9, and Tier 3 is 5 stamina, 10 walks per 9. Do you really think anyone's going to add 12 pitchers to their squad just 
from the AL and NL East just to get five stamina and 10 walks per nine. Is that really worth it? And then you have to have this 92 Roy Halladay in your starting rotation. So it takes up a spot. Just doesn't make sense, right? Now, here's an example of a pretty good captain, but it's limited. You have to get all of the cover athletes in the game that have been on a cover of MLB The Show. Um, and then some iterations of the game before they changed it over to San Diego Studios. So you got, I'm pretty sure Vlad's on this team, obviously David Wright, Ryan Howard, Derek Jeter now, Chipper Jones at one point maybe. So it's limited. You need nine past cover athletes of MLB The Show to get Tier 3 boost. It's a pretty good boost though, so they didn't mess that up. I think it's a good idea. Again, it's, it's just hard to get this team complete. Um, and again, there's just so many incomplete captain ideas, right? How come if there's a catcher captain and a shortstop captain, how come there's no second base captain? How come there's no third base? I get maybe you don't want to do it for every position, but I think you should do more than just two positions. But I guess they probably figured the overlap with secondary shortstop people and primary made sense. So I think that's not bad. The tier boost is good here. All right. Now, the other... So let's see, filter, only on captains. So for some reason, it's not showing me the team, individual team captains, but obviously every team has their own captain and it alternated throughout the year, right? So, oh, you know why? It's because you can't buy them on the marketplace. All right, so if I go to, hopefully if I go to my inventory, it'll show me. All right, so there's, these are all the team captains. You get them through the program. They're all 95s for the most part. Now, when they started this, they clearly recognized something and made a tweet. But if I go to any, like, set one or set two captain, um, maybe they changed some of them for set two. But while I'm here, we'll take a look. Like, 90s pitching captain, great idea. Excellent boost for tier three. Even for tier two. Pitching clutch, hits per nine, uh, walks per nine stamina. I think if you get to tier three, you should deserve that four attributes boosted. Um, 10 pitchers from your squad on the 90s. Pretty easy to achieve with the way they added all these cards this year and different versions of them. Free swingers captain. It's just a fun idea. Eight hitters with 70 or lower plate discipline on your squad. Pretty good boost there. But let's go, like I was saying earlier, let's go to a set one. 11 hitters from the Phillies on your squad. And then you have to get JT to parallel two. So they recognized that this was dumb. And then all the captains after this for each individual team changed so that you didn't have to have any parallel level requirement because i don't think anyone wants to grind a 92 overall card to get them to the p2 just so they can use this team the boost itself is okay like i said i think if you get to tier three you deserve four it should be boosts all right now um we'll keep going through some of these uh of what i think are good captains what i think they could have expanded on more like i said i think the more positions would be nice i think if you add it um, maybe even some 97 overall captains so that you can actually use them and you don't have to make people do this glitch where you put Cal Ripken or Jimmy Rollins and they're out of position and then you get their 99 in and swap them out and whatever. Uh, if you guys don't know about that, you can check out one of my other videos where I claim that I'm cheating and then you'll see how to do that glitch. But, like, I think it would have been nice if they made more of the captain's core cards so that's another criticism I give to it. Set five captains only give three attribute boosts at tier three, so they took away the four category. Didn't really like that. I think if you made them, um, I guess all these captains are pretty accessible, the team captains, because you can go back into the program and then go through and get those. Now, it would have been nice though. So for example, it alternated set four for uh, just for example, the Phillies captain was pitching and then set three was hitting Ryan Howard. So if you wanted to use Ryan Howard in season five, you would have to wild card him. So that's something they could have tweaked by making them either core or giving a hitting and a pitching captain to the team for each new season. But oh well. Uh, what other captains was I thinking of? Th now that I've seen that Roy Holiday, I think a big one you can do is division captains, right? either individual divisions or just the region. So you could do East captains, so AL, NL East, and then Central, West. Both pitching and hitting, so you don't mess that up. Um, 
You could do a righties captain, a lefties captain. You could do a switch hitting captain. I think that would be great. Again, make some of them maybe a 97 overall so they can get a little bit from their own boost to almost make them a 99 and make them usable in your lineup or your rotation. The live series captain, I, I hope SDS realized that nobody actually used that in competitive online play. The team affinity captains I thought were a really good idea. These are pretty decent boosts for that program to get along faster. So the one thing they've done well is team affinity and, and monthly awards. I think those are good captain boosts. All right. But anyway, I just wanted to do a quick review of captains and what they could have done better with it. Please let me know in the comments what kind of captains you would like to see or how they could have made it better by either raising the overall or making some of the captains core. Um, what position captains you would like to see, what team captains, um, and things like that, right? I'm seeing Bryce Harper now in that little um, card book. He had an all-star series captain, but it would be nice if they made it all of the all-star cards, not just the all-star series card, you know? So with Bryce Harper's captain boost, you can't use MLB, or you can't use uh, 2023 all-star game cards. So that would have been nice so that you get a whole team of 23 all-star cards with a captain boost. But anyway. That's that's my spiel. That's my review on it. Let me know down below what you would like to see. And uh, thanks for watching.